Hello, welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Um, my name is Kelsey, and today I'll be going over uh, probability and statistics. Um, today's topic is continuous random variables uh, variance. So if you haven't seen our previous videos, we strongly recommend you check those out because I will be going over, uh, I'll be using certain properties discussed in previous vi uh, videos in order to prove um, some properties of variance. So if you, don't, if you aren't familiar with expectation value and other statistics, and probability concepts, we strongly recommend you check those out first. OK, so I start by saying, uh, let y be a continuous random variable with mean mu, uh, probability density function p of y, and a range um, on a to b. So if you were with us for our uh, video on standard deviation variance and range for a discrete variable, um, you would know that range is a measure of variation. And uh, range is usually given if you're given a probability uh, density function. I'm going to write down the definition of variance. It is the same definition. It's a me measure of variation. So it is this expectation value of how much um, the random variable um, differentiates from the mean and it's squared. Uh, so using what we were given, one way of, fi of uh, solving for the variance is by doing this. If you remember. Um, the expectation value can be given and found with the probability density function, like so. We have a range, you integrate. And if you were to evaluate this integral, it will give you the variance. Because by the definition of expectation value and the definition of variance, we can find that. Um, so there are other ways of calculating the variance, and that's what I'm going to go over by proving um, uh, these three properties of variance. And I will be using um, the definition of variance and some properties of expectation value to do so. So I'm going to start with number one. So number one says that the variance of y is equal to expectation of y squared minus the expectation of y quantity squared. So I will start by using this definition that I wrote here to derive that. Uh, so I will start here, and then I'm going to FOIL this out because um, we have y minus mu squared that can be evaluated. So I'm now going to use the property of expectation value so that the expectation value of, in parentheses, a plus b is equal to the expectation value of a plus the expectation value of b. And if you're willing to accept that, you should be willing to accept that I can turn this into into uh, this right here. Um, so from this, uh, another property of the expectation value is that if you have constants, and we know that mu is a constant and negative 2 is definitely a constant, you can pull that out. I'm also going to use the fact that um, the expectation value of a constant, and mu squared is definitely a constant, it's definitely going to be a constant uh, because it's, it is, of course, going to be mu. Uh, I'm going to use the fact that we have defined mu as expectation value of y. Um, and I'm just going to combine terms. And now we have proven number one. So we see that expectation value of uh, y minus mu quantity squared is equal to the expectation value of y quantity squared minus mu squared. Or, uh, sorry, the expectation value of uh, y squared minus uh, mu squared. So that's number one. Uh, very helpful because calculating variance through just this alone can sometimes be a little gritty, um, not the easiest thing to do. And if you use uh, number one up here, well, all you really have to worry about is the expectation value of y squared. And you can use the same method we used for calculating um, expectation value for something before. Uh, so now I'm going to move on to number two. Uh, number two says variation of x plus y in parentheses is equal to variation of x plus variation of y. As long as they are independent, you're going to see why they have to be independent as I um, finish the proof. But I will start uh, over here. So as you can see, I am using that uh, alternate definition of variance or a uh, way to find it right here. I'm going to FOIL it for my next step. Uh, 
And then from there on, I'm going to then use the uh, properties of expectation value that I used earlier in order to prove uh, the first part. Uh, and then from here on, I'm going to rewrite it out so that it's clearer to see. Uh, the next step, I'm going to use um, properties of the expectation value. I'm going to pull the two out from there because we know that a constant um, in, the in the expectation value can be pulled out. Um, I'm also going to regroup terms, and I'm going to use the definition of something called covariance um, in order to uh, evaluate this to the last step. Okay, so I've grouped it together, so you might be able to see it now. Um, this is very, very uh, variance of x. This is very variance of y. And this is what's known as two times, I could pull out a two, the covariance of x and y. And so when I say in, uh, x and y are independent, that means we know that the covariance is equal to zero. So what that's going to end up being is Uh, then you will get variance of x plus y is equal to variance x plus variance y plus two covariance of xy, but that's going to be equal to zero if x and y are independent, and that proves number two. Uh, so this is very helpful if you have uh, two random variables and you need to find the variance of their sum. And for the third part, I will be proving this uh, variance of ay plus b, where a and b are constants, um, is equal to a squared variance of y. And I am going to be using the other two in order to do so. OK, so I got this from using number two, uh, because of course, um, this ay and the b, they're going to be um, independent from each other, a and b are constants, y is a random variable, so this is a valid move. Uh, so I'm writing this already. I am going to write down um, what variance of b looks like, even though I already know it's going to be 0. I'm about to show why, uh, but I will write it down. Uh, so I got this from uh, number 1 that we used before. Um, I'm turning it into expectation va uh, values, and now I'm going to continue. Uh, and from this, I hope you see that uh, variation of b, it equals 0. I uh, didn't even necessarily have to write it, but I wanted to show that out. Um, so I pulled out a squared, and I'm going to pull it out again to show um, that this is equal to. Uh, b's cancel out, b squares cancels out. Um, this is just equal by number 1, a squared variance of y. OK, so that's how you prove um, that third part there. That's um, very helpful for a number of reasons. Uh, for one, we've also proven kind of two subsets of this. So if you're willing to accept this is true, uh, then you would be able to see that if we set b equal to 0, that would mean a y is equal, a uh, variance of a y is equal to a squared variance of y. So that's the same. And if you set a equal to 1, you'd be able to see that um, variance of y plus b is equal to variance of b, a uh, variance of y. And that makes sense because if you have some kind of graph and you just kind of shift it over um, in terms of the random variable, but you keep all of the distances from the mean the same, then you're going to have the same variance because variance is a measure measurement of variation. It is independent of where uh, that mean falls. So um, that is it for um, variance of continuous random variables. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you would like to see more on probability and statistics, you can click up here. If you would like to subscribe to our YouTube channel, feel free to click here. If you want to visit us on centerofmath.org, uh, click down here. And if you are on a mobile device, you can click right up there in that corner. It should give you the same links. Thank you very much for watching. We hope you learned something about statistics.